You might be wondering, why am I wearing a Christmas jacket? It's not Christmas. Well, it's because it's the only nice thing that I own, and I need to wear something nice because I'm planning a funeral. Now, don't get too sad. It's for dead franchises, and not just any dead franchises, Sega dead franchises. How many are there? Dear God, send me help! Remember Sega? It used to be one of the basic competitors in Nintendo, and after several bad business decisions, was forced to work with their rival. But just how did we get to Sonic 06? And Sonic Rise of Lyric? Well, it all started in 1940 when Martin Bromley, Irving Bromberg, and James Humbert formed Standard Games. They made arcade machines and slot machines in Hawaii for the staff of the military bases there. Whoa, slow down, you're not Konami! After World War II, they sold the company and created service games, named for the military focus. And after the US banned slot machines, they said, fine, we'll take our gambling to Japan. After this, they expanded worldwide, creating numerous entities in South Korea, the Philippines, and South Vietnam. The name Sega came from one of their slot machines, named the Diamond Star, which would later become the company's name. Then several investigations revealed that there were numerous instances of fraud and corruption in service games. So that's where they got the inspiration for Special Criminal Investigation. The Japan branch was dissolved shortly after, and Bromley created two companies to take its assets, Nihon Go Goroku Busan and Nihon Ki Kai Saizo. Saizo did business under Sega Incorporated, while Busan was Atomic Inc. They later merged in 1964. Jesus, when are we going to talk about Sega? Okay, geez, I'm getting to it. Busan acquired a company called Rosen Enterprises and merged it into Sega Enterprises. See, told you. Soon after, they shifted focus to coin-operating machines and did second-hand machines requiring frequent maintenance. They began to just make their own replacement parts. And after this, they said, fuck your own machines, and made their own shit. Their first machine was Periscope, a submarine simulator, which was innovative for the time and was very successful in Japan and later made its way to Europe and the US. They were sold again to Gulf and Western Industries and made their first game, Pongtron, in 1973. It was just fucking Pong, but with a slightly different title. They went on to release several games during this period and prospered during this period. And then, the 80s came. Following the decline in the arcade market in 82, Sega knew something had to be done. Ayo Nakayama, the president of Sega, advocated the company to use their hardware knowledge to move it to the home consumer market in Japan. So what did they do? They released a f***ing computer, the SG-3000, and after learning of Nintendo developing the Famicom, they worked on their first console, the SG-1000, alongside the SG-3000. They did well and even managed to outpace the Famicom in Japan. However, Nintendo was working on getting third-party developers to work on the Famicom, while Sega was basically just the one guy in the corner of the classroom, and were hesitant to work with anyone. In 85, they worked on the Mark III, which was a redesigned SG-1000. In the US, the system would later be known as the Master System. It's in October later that year, and well, how did it do? It f***ing bombed. Yeah, it didn't do so well. Despite being more powerful than the Famicom, the problem was Nintendo required third-party developers to work for them, and only them, and not to release any of their titles on other consoles. As a result, Sega was forced to release their own games and obtain the right to port third-party games. The Master System released the following year in September, and it didn't do well. Part of the problem was they paired themselves with Tonka. Yes, the guys who make the toy cards you see at the drugstore. No wonder it failed. They had no prior experience with video game consoles, and ultimately, it doomed the Master System to fail. At least in the US. In Europe, it did extremely well. But that pales in comparison to how it did in Brazil. It's still sold there today, what the hell? The Master System also had the pleasure of being some of my least favorite boxes of all time. It's simplistic, which isn't a bad thing in and of itself. But why do they all look like they just drew stuff on graphing paper? It looks like they were trying to do what Nintendo did with the Black Box NES games, but worse. I mean, yes, you get an accurate look at what the game actually is, but look at this. Sega released the successor to the Master System, the Mega Drive, known as the Genesis here in the US on October 29th, 1988 in Japan. But it couldn't have been worse leaked timed, because it released just a week after Super Mario Bros. 3 hit the shelves. And people were more focused on that, rather than the sequel to the stupid f***ing Master System. While in the US, it launched on October 14th, 1989. The CEO of Sega of America, Michael Katz, came up with a new marketing strategy. One, 
target Nintendo and call them a bunch of p****s. And two, create a better library than the Master System. But anything is better than the Master System's library, so that's pretty easy. Nintendo beat them. However, in 1990, Sega looked for a new mascot, because people were saying, who the f is Alex Kidd? With this came Sega's new mascot, Mr. Needle Mouse, also known as Sonic the Hedgehog. Nakayama decided that cats just didn't work and replaced him with Tom Kalinske. And what did he do? Replace the bundled game with Sonic the Hedgehog and reduce the price. Yeah, it's no wonder they beat Nintendo 2-1 over the 1991 holiday season. Oh yeah, Sega also released the Game Gear in 1990. And that's all that needs to be said about the Game Gear. What? What do you mean my coffins weren't made? What do you mean we're not a coffin company and we're a cardboard company? And what do you mean you were bought by Nintendo? Okay, fine then, I don't need you, I'll make my own coffins! My coffin supplier canceled. So now, I need to bury my franchise in something else. Ah, I know. I'll treat them exactly how Sega treats them. Into the garbage they go. The Genesis did run into a problem, though. It wasn't as powerful as the SNES. And so they released several add-ons to try to increase the power of the Genesis, such as the Sega CD and the Sega 32X. Both these did poorly because they were overpriced and nobody cared. With the CD, one of the biggest controversies in Sega's history. Night Trap! It was so bad, Sega entered back into court again. Damn it, Sega! People were really up in arms about this scene, but in reality, it wasn't that bad. The only reason why people freaked out was because they didn't have prior knowledge of the story of the game, and that you're actually trying to save them and not kill them. But people weren't having it, and Sega just got destroyed in court. Anyways, the Saturn. <laughs> the Saturn released on November 22nd, 1994 in Japan, and it did well. In fact, it even sold out at the start. But here in America? <laughs> During E3 1995, Sega revealed that the Saturn would be $400, come with Virtual Fighter, and was available right now. It f***ing bombed. This move pissed off retailers, and some refused to sell the Saturn because they weren't given enough time to prep or even warning that this was happening. And also, this didn't give consumers enough time to actually get money ready. Because who has $400 lying around? Due to this and the high price of the Saturn, people went with the one that played a Ridge Racer. What didn't help was a lack of a new Sonic game. Sonic was the game people bought a Genesis for. There was supposed to be one in Sonic Extreme! It was supposed to be Sonic's first 3D platformer, but due to developmental problems, it was cancelled, and instead we got Sonic 3D Blast. Sega then killed the Saturn three years after it released. Sega wasn't doing well during this time, and that's an understatement. Not only were Sega actually posting losses in 1998 for the first time since 1988, they also had people leave left and right, such as Kalinske. They needed their next console, the Dreamcast, to do well. Did it? It even did worse than the Saturn. What? It only lasted for a little over two years, but had an incredible library of games such as Jet Set Radio, Sonic Adventure, and Shenmue, all considered classics and still loved to this day. But it did badly, only selling a little less than 9 million units. The Saturn did better than it. The Wii U did better than it. And for people that have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, that means that it did really bad. But back then, just didn't see much value in it. And their choices were this or the one that plays DVDs and games. Sega knew what they had to do. And on January 23rd, 2001, they announced that they would cease console development and focus on developing software for other platforms. Obviously, now that their games weren't stranded on dead consoles, they were much more widely accessible. And hey, Sega actually turned a profit. However, this led to a new problem. Many of Sega's classic franchises weren't getting games or hadn't gotten games for years. Shenmue is one of the bigger ones. The only reason why a third one happened was because it got funded through Kickstarter. And even then, Sega had nothing to do with it. All they did was gave them the license. Other notable examples include Jet Set Radio, Virtual Fighter, and Star Horse! Because the world's been longing for another entry of f***ing Star Horse. Currently, it's mainly Sonic, Persona, and Yakuza recently. It's very likely to see an entry of these often. For example, for Persona alone, in 2016 we got Persona 5, and this year we're getting Persona 5 The Royal and Persona 5 Scramble. That's kind of f***ing ridiculous. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Persona 5, but this is a little ridiculous. Luckily, it looks like they've been working on remedying this, with House of the Dead getting another entry. An arcade unit, but hey, 
It's still Newhouse did. But look at all these dead franchises. I mean, how am I gonna have a funeral for all of them?